one of the best players in Ireland in the picture there, unable to play today. Under the raincoat there in Mallow is Ashling Maloney from Tipperary. I'd say most people would say Amy Mackin and herself. Maybe one or two others are amongst the very elite, but unfortunately, Ashling suffered a cruciate on around the 24th, 25th of June. She had her operation exactly a month later, the 25th of July, and that means that she's only weeks after the operation, and boy, have Tipperary missed her. They've not won a game since, and well, they hadn't won one either before that, to be fair, but since then, they suffered two very big defeats, so Ashling is not able to play today and won't be for quite some time, but we wish her all the best with her recovery. Quite a few other casualties there. The Kennedy sisters both injured as well. That's Anna Rose and Caitlin. So big blows there. And then their All-Ireland winning captain, Samantha Lambert, has retired as well. So four big losses there for Tipperary. But let's look at the Tipperary team that is out there today. Starting with Lauren Fitzpatrick, the captain in goals. Number two, Lauren Nagel. Three, Maria Curley. Four, Emma Cronin. 5, Elaine Kelly, 6, Lucy Spillane, 7, Laura Dillon. At midfield, it's Orla O'Dwyer with Eva O'Shea at number 9. 10 is Cleana O'Dwyer, 11, Eva Fennessy, 12, Neve Hayes, 13, Roisin Hard, 14, Marie Creedon, and 15 is Angela McGuigan, who takes the freeze. That's the 15, and... The Kerry team now will go on to them. And goals, it's Kira Butler. Number two is Julie O'Sullivan. Three, the captain, Ashling Desmond. Four, Kira Murphy. Five, Ashling O'Connell. Six, Kaylee Cronin. Seven, Cot Lynch. Eight, Lorraine Scanlon. Nine, Neve Carmody. Ten, Mary O'Connell. Eleven, Quiva Evans. Twelve, Louise Galvin. Thirteen, Danielle O'Leary. Fourteen, Emma Deneen. And fifteen, Louise Nemaraharta. And out in the middle of the field there, you'll see the referee, Kevin Phelan, speaking, speaking to the two captains, Ashling Desmond and the goalkeeper, Lauren Fitzpatrick, who incidentally plays with the Ballymacarbury Club in Waterford, just over the border from Tipperary. So a last word there from Kevin, who has come down from Leash today. He's from the St. Bridget's Club there. And you might remember him from refereeing the 2019 All-Ireland Junior Final in Crow Park and we're getting very near that stage again in just a few weeks time all of the All-Ireland Finals will be on again we're looking forward to that of course but today it's the TG Cahar All-Ireland Senior Football Championship relegation playoff qualifier one so it's a battle of survival really and the losers today will have to play the losers from next week's game, Cavan against Tyrone, so the losers will get another chance. The winners will be done for the season. They will have survived. They will, will, have, will have kept their Division or not Division 1, that's the league, of course, their senior status in the championship. Kerry, of course, have gone through a bit of a transition as well, so I talked about Tipperary's players that they are missing, but... Kerry down to our right here, warming up rather enthusiastically there. A few of them with hats on, like you think it was February. Nice green and yellow hats, of course, but the Kerry girls down there, there without the likes of Sarah Hula. And I mean, it's unusual to see a Kerry team without her. Three All-Stars in her time, but she is retired. Uh, Anna Galvin is in the subs, so they're, they're missing a few players as well, a few familiar faces. But then again, they do have a lot of girls back. They have five starting today who played in the All-Ireland final of 2012 against Kerry so the plenty of experience there and you can make that six if you include Megan O'Connell who's at number 17 today for Kerry from the Southern Gales because she played at number 13 corner forward in that All-Ireland final against Cork nine years ago the five by the way you've got Louise you have Lorraine Scanlon Ashling Desmond Louise Galvin and Cod Lynch and Cod has come back from her travels to Amsterdam and the Caribbean for a number of years she won an All-Star back then in 20. 12 but she's back now and she's in the fold at number seven another interesting one just behind her kira murphy by the way she's a niece of a certain column gooch cooper and she's from the mkl gales and if you're wondering where they are they're a mid carry amalgamation and kira has been around a few years herself now she was on the team of the league back in 2016 so all very muted here in Mallow. Obviously a halfway house between 
the two and a limited attendance. Weather overcast and drizzly, I think is the best way to put it, but the pitch I think will play well. We'll pause now for the anthem. Kerry definitely the favourites this afternoon in Mallow, judging by recent results. Donegal beat Kerry in the championship, by only, but only by four points. And Galway beat Kerry, but only by one point. So Kerry ran Donegal and Galway pretty close. And in those games, Louise Mar the Marharta scored 3-11 in two games. So she obviously is still their go-to player, even without Sarah there. And Meath beat Tipperary very handsomely by 14 points. And Cork beat Tipperary. I won't even give you the score, it was that much. But Tipperary haven't actually won a game since before the pandemic. They've lost their last nine straight. They drew the one before that. Their last win was on February 16th, 2020, when they beat West Meath. So the form would certainly suggest that Kerry are going to win this. The rain has decided to team down just before the start. So it's a little bit miserable for the poor players out there. We're up in the stand, we're okay, but the players are out there and you can see that um, although it's been quite nice the last half hour or so, the start of the game will be in heavy rain. I'm looking around to see if there's any late changes. See the temporary number two. Lauren Nagel has gone to left corner back and she's actually marking Hannah O'Donoghue. So Hannah is in from the start and 17 you see out in the middle there as well. That's Megan O'Connell. She's at midfield. So late changes on the Kerry side. That's two at least and Megan goes up for it. And Megan, I didn't mention her a few minutes ago. She played in the 2012 All-Ireland Senior Final in Crow Park against Cork at number 13, corner forward. So she's been thrown in here from the start today. And Hannah O'Donoghue really knows, needs no introduction. But it's Tipperary on the attack. And this is good work. This is Neve Hayes. She got a goal a few weeks ago. She's looking for another one. No, she'll take a point. That's a good start for them. Because Tipperary have not exactly been the form team the last two games. They've scored seven points and won ten. And they've conceded a lot. They've only scored one goal. And it was by that player, Neve Hayes, who's just scored the first point to give Tip a very good start to the game. Neve from Fethard. Very composed there. Maybe thought about a goal for a second, but the sensible option was the point. That's a great ball by Megan O'Connell. And she gives it in to a, to Quiva Evans. And she's looking for Deneen, but that's swept up by Maria Curley. And here she comes again. And that's good play by Tipperary earlier in this game. And don't mean to sound too surprised, but as I say, the form book would suggest that Kerry are strong favourites for this game, but it's Tipperary who have made the better start. This is Elaine Kelly, number five. 13 is rushing hard. So I wonder will that give them a little bit of confidence? Fennessy now runs into two carry players, but leaves it off to Hard, and Hard tries to burst through the wall of players, and there could be a chance here, actually, for Creedon. She's going through in goal, and she's let go, and in the end, it nearly goes in, but it's saved by the legs of the goalkeeper, Kira Butler. It looked like she was carrying the ball a bit, but I guess there was two players on her, so maybe the referee, Kevin Feeling, gave her advantage, and he's now going to have a word with his umpire, but certainly she got through and got her shot away. And only for, I think, the right leg of Kira Butler, that would have been a goal for Tipperary and a perfect start. Referee is happy. We'll continue with a 45 to be taken by Angela McGuigan. She takes the freeze. 
She scored three in the last game, three in the previous game. This is Elaine Kelly. Yeah, and Tipperary do look like they've been galvanized by that early start that they got a point and nearly a goal as well. So they're playing with a little bit of confidence here, which has maybe been lacking recently. And they're popping the ball around quite nicely. This is Laura Dillon. This is Hayes, again, the goal scorer from a few weeks ago against Cork, but she loses possession, or rather she's been dispossessed by Ashling O'Connell. I'm talking of Cork, that's where she plays her club football. There's Caught Lynch. Caught give it away, but got it back at the second time. And you can hear the crowd getting very animated here. Julie O'Sullivan for Kerry, number two. That's a lovely ball into the full forward, Deneen. And she gets support from Evans. But good work in the Kerry defence. Reminds me of a certain Samantha Lambert, the way she used to sweep up in there and break up attacks. And that's good work again by Tipperary. Kerry haven't really had a sniff so far. Eva O'Shea, the number nine, gives it to her captain and goalkeeper, who sets off on a run a la Rory Began or Neve. Number five now is Elaine Kelly speeding up the right wing and being chased by Louise now Murahurta, but she's not catching her. This is good running, and she bursts through a tackle as well and is blown in the end for overcarrying, but she signals for somebody to try and cover her back there because she might take a minute getting back, but it's okay. Orla O'Dwyer is there, and Orla watched it all the way, and away she comes with the ball now, tries to bounce it, but you can tell there that it doesn't bounce too well. The rain has stopped here, I think, but the surface will be very greasy. Dwyer there again, composed on the ball. Hayes to Cleana O'Dwyer. She's from a different club to Orla O'Dwyer. She's Brian Bruce. Orla is Boher Lahan. That's when she's not with the Brisbane Lions, of course. <laughs> Referee gives a push there and a foul on Ava Fennessy from Clonmel commercials and Angela McGuigan immediately starts to strut over there because this is her job and her territory. And the referee has signalled for time to be held up. Four and a half minutes into the game for treatment to be allowed. So a very promising start for Tipperary. They're not playing like a team who hasn't won a game since February 2020. Good promising start for them. Their last outing, they scored just seven points and Meath beat them well, but then again, look what Meath have done since. Before that, Cork beat them 6-14 to 1-10. So a couple of hammer blows for them there, but this is much better so far today. Their management, Declan Carr from Holy Cross and Claire Halley is in there as well. May carry management to give them a mention now that we have a little pause. Dara Long and Declan Quill. Selectors Geraldine O'Shea, Anna Maria O'Donoghue and Rory Doyle. And just to go back and repeat that Hannah O'Donoghue is in from the start. She's a bit of a goal machine. She burst onto the scene in 2016 from Beaufort. So she has started, but she hasn't had a chance even to get near the ball. Such is the start by Tipperary who have Scored one point, and that looks like it's just gone to the right. That's disappointing from Angela McGuigan. Scored three in each of the last two games from Freeze, but missed that relatively straightforward one. Now, this is interesting because the number 17, Megan O'Connell, who has started the game, is playing very deep, picking that up from the kickout. So she seems to be playing in a sweeper role, or maybe defensive midfield. Lots of experience, of course. And lots of unhappiness in the crowd at that decision. It looked like a carry ball had been awarded, but it's gone to Tipperary, and the carry supporters not happy about that at all. And there you can see how difficult it is to get your hands on the ball. Very slippy. Ashling Desmond there with the gloves on, but still had to take two goals to get the ball. Ashling from Rathmore, who won their first ever carry senior championship last year. That's why she is captain this year. 2015 All-Star. And again, Tipperary dealing very comfortably with anything Kerry um, throw at them. 
That's Laura Dillon, number seven back there, getting support from Lucy Spillane. And Arlo O'Dwyer always available and always composed on the ball. Dillon again. The three one tackle. Tries to go through a second and gets her free. Filed by Lorraine Scanlon. Laura gives it short to Fennessy. Support there from Howard. Howard does well to spin away. She's been followed by Kira Murphy, but gets it to O'Dwyer. And Orla does seem very comfortable, as I say, on the ball out there. She's always available to link up the play. This is Howard. Off to McGuigan. This is better. O'Dwyer, clean O'Dwyer this time. A challenge comes in, and that's another free. Uh, McGuigan will maybe fancy her chances again, or maybe she won't. She's looking towards the sideline, maybe, and she's saying, I missed the last one. And indeed, it's Ava Fennessy who's going to step up and try this one from almost exactly the same spot as the last one. Eight and a half minutes in, and I'd say... Tipperary would have bitten your hand off at the start of the game if you'd have said to be one point to no score up, but they've missed two simple threes. Could be three up very easily. And at this level, you can't really miss frees like that. And now they have an issue because two players have tried and missed. So who takes on the next one? Now, Megan O'Connell for Kerry. Can she get them going? She feeds Ashley O'Connell, who plays along with Emer Scully in club football. This is Elaine Kelly and Tipperary turning Kerry over very easily. That's Lauren Nagel from Art Finnan, number two. This is the other cornerback, Emma Cronin from Moyle Rovers. To get it out to Arla O'Dwyer and lots of room over on the far side. Gives it to Cleana O'Dwyer. There's a low ball played down into the corner. Ashling Desmond is there though for Carey and intercepts but concedes a sideline ball. And Carey just have not clicked at all and we're 10 minutes in. Another free for Tipperary. And this by the way a Carey team who ran Galway to a point and then ran Donegal to four points but they are one down should be three down to Tipperary this is Megan O'Connell again seeing plenty of ball the number 17 from Southern Gales she's trying to link up the play from the back Julio Sullivan that was Louise Galvin to Lorraine Scanlon and this is Emma Deneen and Kerry going to equalize and Try and get it from their first attack of the game, and they do get it from their first effort on goals. It goes over the bar from Deneen, taken off her left foot, and it's 1-1 after 11 minutes. Yet it's been all Tipperary up to that, so they probably will feel a little bit aggrieved after the good start that they have made. Now, this is interesting. All the Kerry players are near to the goalkeeper. There's four of them, actually, there. Now the Tipperary players are running, and they are running and passing them and going short, so that's obviously a tactic for... Tipperary from the kickouts, that's their plan, and it worked. Dwyer gets it back to her goalkeeper and captain, and that's nicely done. Lots of space for Tipperary on this big field here in Mallow to run into. And that's O'Connell coming in with a challenge, and Kerry have given away quite a few frees, but on this occasion they tackle well and caught Lynch and Desmond managed to turn it over. This is Lorraine Scanlon, 2017 All-Star from Castle Island. Desmond gets it up to Hannah O'Donoghue. And Hannah getting her first touch really of the game, maybe second, gets it down to Louise Nemaraharta and she speeds off towards goal. She scored 3-11 in the last two games. She hasn't scored yet today. She turns onto her right foot, puts it over. I told you she knows where the posts are, and she puts Kerry in front.
Louise from the Gaeltacht area, her club Cork of Divna. 14th season, would you believe, with Kerry, and still their key player in the forwards. And she intercepts that and puts a lovely ball in there to Hannah O'Donoghue. Oh, and that's li nicely laid off as well. And Deneen finishes it to the net. Classic example of giving it to the player in the best position. And Kerry have pounced and they have turned this game around from a point down in a few minutes. Deneen there has scored a goal and a point and it's now 1-2 to a point. Kerry have hit back in style. Tipperary must be wondering what they've done wrong. They really don't deserve to be four points down. But then again, they missed two easy frees. So that was their own downfall. Hannah now with a lovely little dummy there. She drops inside and is she going for a goal? And she goes low and doesn't get the goal, but she will get a free. But Hannah O'Donoghue, I did tell you she's a goal machine. And you could tell that goals were on her mind there. So just to be clear, she's wearing 20. Megan O'Connell is wearing 17, but they have both started the game for Kerry. And looking around the team, it looks like number 13, Danielle O'Leary, has not started the game. She was never going to miss that one. Carry off camera, by the way, way down to the left. Seem to have a spare player, or maybe she's just not marking up too closely, but certainly they're pressing up as much as they can. But that ball has gone rather easily into Kerry hands, and Hanno Donahue now is looking to pounce again, and Louise Namaraherta is going low. She gets her shot away, but the goalkeeper saves it. There's still a chance here, though, and Deneen has scored a second, but is the referee going to disallow it? I think he is. He's saying that maybe there was a push on the goalkeeper and Tipperary getting off the hook it looked like Kerry had got a second goal there but it remains a five point game which is still a big deficit especially after the first ten minutes that Terry Tipperary put in so no goal and Tipperary having a bit of bother from their kick outs it could be punished again, and it's blasted to the left and wide. They've got away with that one. But the goal came from a kick-out that was intercepted, and there was another interception a minute ago. It was nearly a goal as well, so their kick-out strategy might not be working so well after all. And Kerry, after having no threat at all for goal or point in the first 10 minutes, are now threatening every minute. And... The goalkeeper is forced to go high with their kick out way out to the right. And that was a 50-50, but Tipperary won it. And they've got a free. And they're trying to get Ava Fennessy into the play. And she does very well to pick that up and turn inside. She spins inside and takes her solo. But the referee has said she overcarried there. Tried to get her solo away. She knew that she'd carried. Ashling O'Connell now for Kerry. Taken on by Scanlon. She feeds Evans. Deneen. She's been lively. And Louise Namaraharta shoots off her left. And the umpires <laughs> seem to be having a little bit of a debate. The crowd were certain. Just waiting for the umpires, but one seemed to have turned his back and the other, maybe he was leaving the other to it, but he wanted to double check. But in the end, it's given. So it's 1 4 to Kerry, 1 point to Tipperary, 16 and a half minutes. But we did have a bit of a delay in that, so we might be going to the water break. No, nope, we play on. So these kickouts very important. Fitzpatrick for Waterford, or for what am I saying? She plays with club football in Waterford. She's with Tipperary very much today. Kerry now coming in waves. Deneen gets it into O'Donoghue. Lots of room in there for Kerry. And the shot comes in from Carmody, the number nine. And it's saved and pushed wide. And another reprieve for Tipperary. But the Kerry pressure at the minute is relentless. And 
and all Tipperary's good work in the first 10 minutes has been undone. They should have been three points up and instead they are six down. O'Donoghue finds O'Connell. This is Evans looking lively from the MKL Gales. She feeds it back out. O'Connell looked a little bit surprised. Is that for me? Carmody. Pops a ball inside and Deneen does well to come and claim it. This is Carmody again and she's got Evans inside. The number six is Kelly Cronin in there. Number six on her back but she's in the forward area and there's a nice ball slipped to Scanlon and it looked like she might be getting through there but the referee has brought it back for a free and Louise is saying we were away there but the referee wasn't to see that. Mentioned Kelly Cronin there, number six. She's from the Dr. Crooks Club and she's seems to be playing at midfield. She seems to be marking Orla O'Dwyer. And the number nine, Neve Carmody, seems to be playing right half forward. Louise with the sleeves rolled up. <laughs> Makes it 1 5 to a point 19 minutes in. And the referee looks at his watch. I imagine he'll be calling the water break pretty soon. No. Looked at his watch again. And the other watch. One on each wrist. But we go on. And the kick out there is intercepted once more. And it's O'Donoghue this time. Now Namara Hurt. And they're looking to pounce again for a goal. And they get it actually to the corner back. Julio Sullivan all the way up there. Gives it back. And it goes over the bar in the end. And that's been the pattern the last 10 minutes or so. Kerry have really pressed up on the kickouts and they have made temporary pay. So if you're just joining us, temporary, believe it or not, had the better of the first 10 minutes. They were leading by a point to no score. Kerry hadn't even had an attempt at the posts. And temporary missed two relatively straightforward frees. They should have been 3 nil up, but all of a sudden, Kerry got into their groove and they have been relentless ever since and they have scored 1-6 in the last 10 minutes and they could easily and I'm not exaggerating they could have had two three goals in that time added to that so Kerry very happy down there in the huddle in a very comfortable posi comfortable position with their managers Dara Long and Declan Quill They've never been out of senior in the championship. They've never gone down. And the way it's going today, they're not going to go down today either. So just to be clear, this is a senior football championship relegation playoff, but it's the first one. There's two semi-finals, if you look at it like that. The loser from today will go and play the losers from next week's game between Cavan and Tyrone. So whoever loses that will play whoever loses this. And then the loser of that will go down. That's the way it works. Tipperary went down famously a few years ago when they were going really well, but they got beaten by Cavan. Up in Cavan on a famous day where James Daly was in charge and Tipperary stole it at the last, or Cavan stole it at the last minute and Ashing Maloney was sent off. It was a day of drama and Tip went down, but when they went down, they won the All-Ireland Intermediate Championship. Again, they won it two years in a row. And the way things are going, they're in danger of moving down again and losing their senior status. Kerry 1-6, Tipperary a point. Could actually end up with Cavan playing Tipperary again in that crucial game. Brilliant bit of fielding there from Maria Curley for Tipperary. She grabbed on, onto that ball brilliantly and held onto it. Maria from Templemore, and she got her free as well. Plenty of support in the crowd for Tipperary. They want to see if they can raise their game again and recover from having conceded 1-6 without reply. This is Eva O'Shea from Mullinahon.
Fennessy takes over from Kelly. And this is O'Dwyer, not Orla O'Dwyer. This is Cleana O'Dwyer on her right foot, and she goes for the post, and it's gone just to the right and wide, and clearly Tipperary just not as clinical as Kerry when they go on the attack. They've missed quite a few from Clay and Freeze. Oh, good attempt at an interception there by O'Shea, but Tipperary will still get it and turn over. They're giving Cronin her fill of it there, and they have won a free. That's better from Tipperary in the last few minutes. They must have had a few inspirational words during the water break. Now, who's going to take this? Will it be McGuigan again? It's a little bit further out from the two that were missed. So they had one a little bit further in than this, and she put it wide. And then a Fennessy took the next one, put it wide as well. I think she's pinched a yard or two there. She's basically back in the same place from where she missed and where Fennessy missed. Now, they really need this to go over. And it's gone left and right again, and you feel for her because that really dents your confidence when you miss two and your team is struggling. So Tipperary might need plan B or C with the freeze. That's three they've missed in front of the goal. So they should be four points, which would only be a five-point game. But as it is, they are now eight points down. And when things aren't going for you, they just don't go for you. Lorraine Scanlon. Or actually, that is Kayleigh Cronin, sorry, from Dr. Crook. She's got hair down over a number there. I couldn't see it. I thought it was... Eight, but it was actually six. Quiva Evans gets it out to Carmody. Deneen bursting through. She's got a goal and a point so far. She's got a tidy left foot, and so has Louise, but that might drop short, and it does, and it's gathered at the second time of asking by the goalkeeper Fitzpatrick, but she carries it over the line. So a good start after the water break by Tipperary, but unable to get a score and unable to sustain it. You do feel for them because they lost Aisling Maloney. They've lost the two Kennedys to injury, Anna Rose and Caitlin. And Samantha Lambert retired and they just can't get a break. Donahue. It's intercepted, but Louise is there with a the shot, and that could go anywhere, and it's going to go out, I think, for another 45, is it? No, they keep it in, but actually, they just give it straight back to Kerry. There seems to be a goal threat nearly every time Kerry go forward. Now, this is Carmody. Looks like she's going to try for a point, but sends it to the right and wide. But it's Kerry again camping in the Tipperary half. And this is the problem, because... They can't seem to get the ball from their own kick out, or if they do, it's after a lot of pressure from Kerry. Look at the pressure exerted there. Maria Curley did so well to fend off three Kerry players and ended up going back to her goalkeeper. And great pressure again from Kerry. Neve Hayes, left half forward, all the way back there to get it. This is better. Nice turn inside. And that was Eva O'Shea, number nine, gets it to O'Dwyer now. And O'Dwyer speeds off. Gives it back to Orla O'Dwyer. She's got support there, trying to get on her left foot, but that option was closed down quickly. Marie Creedon, 14, gives it, gets it back. And it's just not going smoothly for Tipperary. But they do get a free. And Marie from Thurless Sarsfields looks to take it quickly and picks out Orla O'Dwyer, who's always available. Linking up the play, getting it to Howard. Howard trying to get on her right foot, drops the shoulder onto her left. And now a chance, and that's well taken by Cleana O'Dwyer. And at last, Tipperary have got their second point of the game. They got the first point of the entire game. And Kerry scored 1-6, and now they've got another point. Not exactly stopping the rot, but it's 1-6 to two points. And that was a good score by Cleana O'Dwyer. After good work by rushing hard. This is Elaine Kelly from Kappa White collecting and speeding forward. Leaves it off. And Kerry do seem to be standing off at times. And Tipperary do like to run at them. And they have been drawing quite a lot of frees. 
around this area. The problem is converting them. So Roshin Hard, by the way, who did well to create that last one. She's from the Care Club. She's flying the flag for that club now that Ashling Maloney is out. Roshin scored three points, actually, in the game against Cork. Now this is McGuigan. Don't mean to put the pressure on her, but she's missed two relatively simple ones. She needs this one. Oh, and it hits the post and drops over, and there's a sigh of relief. You can feel all the way around the ground here in Mallow, at least among the Tipperary supporters, and probably from people watching from her club, sleeving them on. Three points for Tipperary and two in a row. That's much better for them. And Orlo Dwyer sees that one out. And that's a sideline ball, which Lorraine Scanlon is trying to claim for Kerry, but it is a tip ball. And Orlo Dwyer tries to go all the way back, but that's a dangerous one. It was nearly intercepted by Evans. And O'Donoghue was looking at it as well, but... Lucy Spillane did really well to get it and send, her and send the ball out to Eva Fennessy and she sends it over the bar. It's as simple as that all of a sudden for Tipperary. 1-6 to 4. And dare I say it, of those three frees that they missed, if they'd scored one or two of those, would be a lot closer. So encouragement for Tip in the last five minutes or so. Three points in a row. Two from play. Tipperary looking at bringing on a substitute. They're going well at the minute, but they are looking at a change. Now, this girl has been very lively. That's Elaine Kelly, and she wins a free for a foot going in when she put her hand down to try and pick the ball up. Arlo Dwyer settling things down and bringing players into the play, like Spillan. Oh, it sounds like a name you would associate more with Kerry, but Lucy Spillan playing for Tipperary. And the chance now from the number seven, Dylan, goes just to the left, but much, much better from Tipperary. Number 26 is Ashley McCarthy from Kerr. She's been warmed up, and she is now coming on. They must have heard me saying that rushing hard was flying the flag for Kerr on her own out there because they've sent in Ashley McCarthy from that club. And she looks to be replacing Marie Creedon, the full forward. Oh, Connell went for that, but she dropped it. Slipped out of her hands. No rain at the minute, but the ball will be greasy from the rain we had before the game and indeed in the first few minutes of it. Ashling Desmond, the captain and fullback of Kerry, well away from the fullback area in the middle of the field, trying to get her team going again. They've dropped off in the last five minutes or so, but now the kingdom come. Louise Namaraharta gets it out towards Scanlon, but it's brilliantly intercepted. This is better from Tipperary. Eva O'Shea was a player who intercepted there, reminiscent of a Samantha Lambert interception. And they now are looking for Ashling McCarthy to get her into the play, and Ashling Desmond battling with her. What a battle of the two Ashlings out there, two seasoned players. And it's McCarthy who gets the decision. Now, where's McCarthy going with this? She's signaling to Orla O'Dwyer to get into the danger area, <laughs> but then she shoots and it goes very near the goals and goes off the post. I don't think that's what she intended. Good work by the goalkeeper Kira Butler from Castle Gregory, which is possibly the furthest away for Kerry players. Travelling to Mallow today, way up there in the Dingo Peninsula. This is Deneen for Kerry from Glen Fesk. She's got one goal already. She scored a point. She's now scored two points, and that has stopped the rut. Tipperary three points in a row, but Kerry have responded. One seven to four. Six points in it again.
Kerry have been very good at pressing these kickouts. And you can see that Lauren Fitzpatrick is in bother. She goes to her left, and it's Neve Carmody who got there with a the hand first. But Tipperary do manage to come away with it. But boy, are they being made to work hard from those kickouts. Emma Cronin, the number four, gives it to her goalkeeper, and she spots. Kelly in loads of space out on the right which has been the case I think because Kerry have maybe dropped the player back so she's had a lot of room out there and off she goes again look at the speed of this girl Elaine Kelly from Kappa White she's done this a lot carries it forward leaves it off and temporary definitely not out of this game this is McWigan oh lovely clever ball takes out three players and the shot comes in and it's brilliantly saved Neve Hayes with the shot but a brilliant save by Kira Butler. Hayes got a goal, their only goal in the championship so far against Cork. She looked like she was through for another one there, but credit the goalkeeper from Castle Gregory. And Dara said, as a neutral, the goal, the game could have done with that. It would have made it very interesting. But Kerry, with Nemarherta, takes on a few challenges. And so does Scanlon, but she is penalised for charging. What a chance for Tipperary just a few minutes ago there to get this game back close. But they're certainly playing well. They've had a lot of game in the first half. And they've shown that there might yet be a surprise in this game. Definitely the underdogs today. They've been a little bit unlucky. This is good work, though, by Roisin Hard, and she's done that a few times. They are prepared to take on the Kerry defence. They just haven't had much luck in front of goals, and these two going at it again, the two Ashlings, and it's McCarthy against Desmond, and McCarthy is forced to come back, and she does come back, but Kelly spills it. McCarthy there to help again. A little bit scrappy, but it's Kerry who come away with it. This is Lucy, um, or rather Kaylee Cronin. Oh, that's bounced nicely for O'Donoghue. And she sets off towards goal and she finds number her to. She gives it back to O'Donoghue. Oh, the deadly duo have done it again. What are they like? They're absolute goal machines. And this time, Louise, even though she scored 3-11 in two games, she was unselfish. And she spotted Hannah O'Donoghue. And that is a... Killer blow for Tipperary just on the whistle of halftime. So there you saw in the last few minutes how tough football can be. Tipperary were six down. They had a one-on-one -on -one goal chance. Kira Butler saved it from Hayes. That could have made it three. And instead at the other end, Kerry have pounced and made it nine in it at the break. And that's really tough on Tipperary, you have to say. And applause coming in for both sides at halftime. It was an entertaining first half. There's no doubt about that in this TG Cahar All-Ireland Senior Football Championship relegation playoff qualifier one. And just to be clear, before we leave you for the halftime break, the losers from today will play the losers of next week's game between Cavan and Tyrone. And then the loser from that will go down if you follow. But for now, we're going to leave you from Mallow and we'll be back just before the start of the second half.
We're back in Mallow for the start of the second half of the TG Cahir All-Ireland Senior Football Championship relegation playoff qualifier one. And I see that Megan O'Connell, number 17, has gone to midfield again at the start of the second half. She's playing more in a sort of deep sweeper role in the first half, but she's gone in for the toss. She's wearing 17, but don't be fooled by that. She started the game. I'm just looking around to see if there's any changes at the start of the second half. I'll keep an eye on that for you in the first few minutes. Referee Kevin Phelan needs a word with his lines person about something. So looks like he's looking at his watch and he's trying to sync everything up, maybe. Not quite sure, but anyway, he looks happy now. Kevin refereed the 2019 All Ireland Junior Final in Crow Park from the St. Bridges Club in Leash. Now off we go. He's happy now, and Megan O'Connell gets the ball right away. And again. This is caught Lynch steaming forward and she gets a free. Goes back to Megan. Temporary with it all to do in the second half. But they showed signs in the first half, especially through this girl, number five, Ilya and Kelly, that they are capable. They just haven't had a rub of the green. Some of it has been their own fault for their poor finishing. And that incident kind of sums up their luck so far they were steaming forward but ran into Julie O'Sullivan and are penalised so nine points in it but that's tough on tip right at the start of the or rather right at the end of the half they had a chance to go to three points in it but instead Kerry went up the other end, they got a goal and made nine and quite a swing. And there's another blow for Tipperary. That's a yellow card as well. Maybe there was a bit of back chat added to the challenge there. I'm not quite sure, but it's merited a yellow card and Tip now down to 14. When things go wrong, they really go wrong. And I think that's Ava Fantasy, their centre half forward as well. And she looks thoroughly disheartened, and you can't blame her. They lost Ashley Maloney on the 25th of June to a cruciate. She's here today, but long, long way off playing for them again. And she was their key go-to player for so long. Samantha Lambert retired, and the Kennedy girls have been injured. So a lot of blows for Tip, but they're still showing a lot of fight out there and a lot of enterprise. They're keeping going despite going down to 14, despite being nine points down. And this is... Orlo Dwyer with a great kick and it goes over the bar and they deserve that tip. I'm not taking this lying down. They are giving it everything and you have to admire that. And in contrast to the troubles that tip had and have trying to get the ball from their own goalkeeper. Kerry that it did that extremely easily. Free given now, though, for that challenge involving Ashling Desmond, the carry captain. On, Referee is his book out again. Maybe just ticking Ashling. So 2 7 plays, 5 points. Emma Deneen with the first one after about 10 minutes. After. Kerry had failed to fire. They scored a goal and a point from their first couple of attacks. And the second from Hannah O'Donoghue just before the break. And the signal looks to be that the Tipperary player cannot continue. They say it never rains, but it pours. And the referee now having a word with Ashling Desmond after all of that. She had gone away from him and it looked like there was nothing happening. But he's now having another word with the Kerry captain about that challenge. And although the signal seemed to be that she wasn't able to continue, it looks like she is continuing now. And it's the number seven, Laura Dillon from Ardfinnan. They took the hit, but she's going on. And temporary, a player yellow carded and looked like they were going to lose another player to injury as well. But they're showing plenty of fight. Ashley McCarthy doing a little bit of a dummy solo there and then going on to her left and spreading the play out. And 
Kerry just sitting in, waiting for them. And it's usually Elaine Kelly who has carried the fight to them, and she's doing it again. That's good play from her. Now it's gone wide, but good intent, good drive. And you have to uh, admire that, as I say, about the tip girls. Mike McCarthy's trying to cut that out. Doesn't manage to do so, though, because Kira Murphy did really well there. The number four, Kira Murphy. Her uncle is Colm Gooch Cooper. But she's very much a cornerback, not a corner forward. From the MKL Gales Club in mid carry. This is Quiva Evans, a super ball into Deneen. She prefers her left foot. She leaves it off to Lorraine Scanlon. And now the kick comes in from Carmody. And it's high and it's gone over the bar. Fine point by Kerry, their first of the second half. Really good move all the way up the field. This is the tip fullback, Maria Curley from Templemore. Looking for Eva O'Shea. And that is Dylan again in the wars. I think it was her who was down a few minutes ago as well. And she does look a little bit groggy, but she's up. This is hard for Tip. She's looking to kick diagonally. That's a super ball to Cleana O'Dwyer. Perfect for the forward to collect and turn. She tries to get support from O'Shea, but the ball is dropped, and Kerry turned that over, and instead it's Carmody now in possession. That's Kerry on the attack. She does brilliantly, Carmody. And now it's Evans. They get it to the shooters. And Louise shoots, but drops it short. Look at the drive by Tipperary again. You wouldn't think they were 14 players and so far behind with nothing going for them. But it's all a little bit individual. see any other changes since halftime or at halftime. I imagine there will be a few subs in the foreseeable future, especially with a few players going down with a few knocks. It's great work by Orlo Dwyer to get back there and break it, and Kelly profited and gets her free. And that's feisty work in there and it was actually Kira Murphy who did really well it looked like she was going to be penalized but instead she's been rewarded and she has won the free for getting in there first to win it the Dwyer though is tip keep coming plays a low one into Ashling McCarthy and Ashling is closely watched in there by Ashling O'Connell, and she got a brilliant hand in there to dispossess McCarthy. I just feel that Kerry are playing within themselves a little bit, and they can step up a gear when they want to. Louise Galvin gives it to the other Louise, Namaraherte. Will she go for her own score? No, she drops it in. There's a chance here, and the shot goes low. I think she was going for a goal. It was well saved, though, by Lauren Fitzpatrick. Left-footed shot. She dived to her left. I thought she must have been going for a point. Maybe she missed hit it, but let's say she was going for goal because that was nearly going in the corner. And that proves exactly the point that when Kerry get going, they are dangerous. They really can step it up a gear, and they're much more clinical when they go at the temporary defence than the other way around. I mentioned substitutes, and I can see number 19 for Kerry about to come in. But we'll stay with the play. This is Ashling O'Connell. Now Donoghue out there wearing 20 and 17 beside her. They both started the game. So they're not subs. Louise Galvin now again. Trying to burst through a few tackles. 
doesn't work though they have to come back out and they've worked it out to cut lynch and now she's on her right foot and she looks lively and gives it to the right i think that was was it Deneen over there on her right side? And she is obviously defying me when I said that she prefers her left foot because she put that over expertly with her right. And yes, number 19 is on. It's Anna Galvin from Southern Gales. She is on. So there's now two Galvins on the field. Not related, I think. They're different clubs. Louise Galvin and Anna Galvin. Anna from Southern Gales. And in fact, Anna replaces Louise. So Galvin for Galvin. So two Galvins on the pitch, but only momentarily Dylan driving forward Cleana O'Dwyer Orla O'Dwyer Cleana O'Dwyer this is super from Tipperary they keep going and rushing hard is there and she draws a foul and gets a free for her team as well driving at the heart of the Kerry defence and getting a reward Now they had problems with their freeze in the first half from this kind of position. That's maybe one of the reasons why they brought McCarthy on because they missed three from identical positions to this. And they can't afford to do that. They get this one and that makes it six. But dare I say it could have been nine. And of course they had a goal chance saved as well although Kerry had a couple of clear goal chances at the other end. Kira Butler, the Kerry goalkeeper, goes high. And in the spill, the referee blows his whistle and gives the free to Kerry. Laura Dillon chasing back, but Ashling O'Connell gets it to O'Donoghue. And there's support there from Anna Galvin, but she comes back instead to Carmody. Gets it back, Carmody, and this is Evans on her right foot. She turns and gets plenty of height on it, but not the accuracy. Angela McGuigan, number 15, for tip all the way back there. And this is Elaine Kelly, who's surely been Tipperary's best player today. And here's another one who has performed heroically. That's Laura Dillon. This is rushing hard. There's a chance here for Tip. There's a few players at the back post. That's good lively play, but in the end the shot is blocked, but it drops kindly and is dispatched over the bar for a point for Tipperary. They deserve that. I think it was Hayes who put it over in the end. And this is interesting, of course, because Tip are now back to 15. Fennessy is back on the field after serving her Sinbin sentence. So they've got back to eight points and they're still looking lively and they're still looking keen and very, very interested. And if they just got a rub of the green, it could all be very interesting. Kerry player getting a little bit of treatment. And I think it is Megan O'Connell. Played a corner forward for Kerry in the 2012 All-Ireland Senior Final in Crow Park against Cork. But today she's very much in a defensive role, using all of her experience. Super interception there by Kira Murphy. She's done that a few times. Really good cornerback. This is Evans. Does really well to sort that one out and improvise. This is Carmody. Super low ball into O'Donoghue and they know that the girls in there have the goals in them. It's just a matter of getting them the ball. And here is Anna Galvin now who's going through with the referee. He's going to bring it all the way back. And I thought she'd got her goal there just a minute or two after coming on. Anna from Southern Gales. I remember she lifted the O'Connor Cup in uh, McHale Park in Castle Bar a few years ago for the University of Limerick. nine for Kerry 14 minutes end of the second half I'm talking of O'Connor Cups Louise won one with UCC in 2012 
I think that's UCC's only uh, one in about 30 years. But she was there in Belfast and was very much a star that day, so much that after that they christened her the female Gooch. She so Madonna won an All-Star in 2012, another one in 2013. And she has scored 3-11 in her two games in the championship before today. But she's a provider as well as you saw in the first half. And it's hard to believe, but Louise is in her 14th season with Kerry. Usually in cahoots with Sarah Houlihan, but Sarah has now retired after winning three All-Stars. So five All-Stars between the two of them. They caused a lot of damage to defences down the years. And Louise is still causing damage. 2-10 to 7. Back to a nine-point game as it was at halftime. So not much change. Well, no change in the scoreboards. Now, the carry are going well, but Tipperary definitely are feeling the effects of a lot of the challenges here. I think that was their fullback, Maria Curley, there getting a bit of attention, but still they keep coming. It's Leon O'Dwyer. And guess who's there? Of course, it's Elaine Kelly now popping up in the attack, being followed there. And what a super tackle that was. Don't you love to see your forwards coming back and getting a clean tackle in like that superbly executed by the goal machine getting back there as a super defender Louise Namarharta Lorraine Scanlon and the game slowed down quite a bit now because we're 45 minutes in players looking a bit tired and tip for all their efforts just can't close the gap and carry quite comfortable at the minute and this is Deneen doing all the hard work, but they end up moving in around and passing the ball in the end to Anna Galvin, who splits the posts and makes it a 10-point game. I think that's the first time we've had that. And the referee is, I think, maybe penalizing. Was it the kick out did not cross the 21? I think that's what he's signaling, so it's a free in. Arlo Dwyer is holding onto the ball and no one is rushing to grab it off her. As you've seen a few weeks ago and we saw her a few times in the last few weeks, once in the Ulster Minor Championship and once last week between Wicklow and Antrim when Wicklow profited with a goal. Kerry not showing as much urgency. The rules slightly different in ladies football. If you take too long to take the kick out it's not a hot ball it's a free in but this one I think it was because the ball did not clear the 21 from the kick out and that's also penalized with a free in seems quite harsh but to be honest I like it it speeds the game up and goalkeepers are very quick to get the ball out if they because they know that if they take too long they'll get penalized and it's almost a certain point there's no hanging around, taking forever to kick the ball out. That was a good kick out by Lauren Fitzpatrick, but such was the pressure from Kerry that McGuigan was unable to collect it. Megan O'Connell to Anna Galvin. And Anna spreads the play with a nice ball to the right of the attack, and it's evaded Deneen, but it's... Deneen now gets it back. She goes on her right and goes low and it's saved. She scored a goal in the first half with her left. Nearly got another one with her right. And is that inside or outside? Is that going to be a free or possibly a penalty? It's hard to tell from here, but I think it's a free. So Louise scored 3-11 in the last two championship games. 1-4 against Donegal. And 2-7 against Galway when they lost just by a point in it. She also rattled the crossbar in the Donegal game. And today she hasn't got her customary goal or two. But she has certainly been firing over the points, and that's why it's 2.13 to 7, and quite a lot of daylight now between the teams. 12 points in it. Water break time. And the referee having a word with the goalkeeper of um, 
Tipperary on the way off there because obviously Lauren Fitzpatrick, the captain of Tipperary, is having a word about that last incident that was penalised and the referee explaining his version of it. You can see and sense the frustration, frustration in Tipperary who are lining up a sub, by the way, so I imagine she'll come on when this water break is over. That's 25, I think I saw for Tipperary, which is Ellen Moore from Moyne Temple Tui. And you also saw in there the captain, Lauren Fitzpatrick, trying to urge the players to lift it in the last 15. They've certainly given lots of effort today, but been very unfortunate they've been hit at the wrong times by goals and also by a sin bin managers and they're doing their best as well Declan Carr from Holy Cross and that's the captain Lauren having another word they're playing for pride at this point you would imagine and it looks like they're going to have another relegation playoff in a couple of weeks' time against either Cavan or Tyrone to see who stays up in senior and who goes down, more importantly. Now, Kerry have made a change. 11, Quiva Evans is off, replaced by number 13, Danielle O'Leary. 13, but she didn't start the game. She's from the Rathmore Club, who won the senior championship last year for the first time ever. And Danielle is the Kerry minor captain from last year. In their ranks, by the way, they also have the minor captain from this year. That's Rachel Dwyer from Southern Gales 24, so we might see her. Anna Galvin gets a hand in there, and this is Carmody who's really come into the game, but she's surrounded at the minute. Four Tipperary players after her, but she's doing really well to hold possession, but eventually Tip, hound her down, and Orlo Dwyer gets it and gets it to Laura Dillon. Tip are showing the little bit of fight that their captain asked for. This is super play from Lucy Spallan as well. And she's going again. And she's now got four players around her, but she gets a free. <laughs> Elian Kelly, as ever available. That's a strong challenge. That's come in from Ashley Desmond. Possibly looked a little worse than it was, but... Nevertheless, the referee is looking in his book. Play goes on behind him, and now he sees what's going on. But Ashley Desmond, I imagine, is probably on two ticks at the moment, so she needs to be careful. And that's another free for Tipperary. They're really having a go tip. You have to give them credit for that. I think it's 12. Is that Hayes who's down? I'm trying to see if the substitution was made. Yeah, it was made. So 25 for Tipperary is on. That's Ellen Moore. Ashley McCarthy, 26, is standing over the injured player with the ball. So she'll be taking the free. A little bit far out, I would imagine, for her to go for a score. Big game later on today, of course. Mayo against Dublin on Crow Park. And then Cork v Meath tomorrow. Those are the two TG Cahar 2021 All-Ireland Senior Football Championship semi-finals. So get on that one on TG Cahar if you can. Kerry have made a change. They have replaced Kelly Cronin from Dr. Crooks, the number six, with Kira O'Brien from Lawn Rangers. She's the number 18 who's gone in there. Ashley McCarthy... Her pass tried to find Orlo Dwyer, but that was intercepted by the girl who's just come on. No, actually, it was Anna Galvin who came on about five minutes ago, the other sub. This is O'Donoghue to Danielle O'Leary, wearing 13, but she's only on the field a few minutes. O'Donoghue wearing 20, who seemed to start the game in place of her. Kerry work it to Kira Murphy, back to O'Donoghue, to Carmody, to O'Connell. It's 
is O'Leary. A nice pop ball into the forwards and left off by Deneen to Lynch and Deneen gets it back. This is super play by Kerry. Can they round it off with a score? They can. <laughs> Lorraine Scanlon, 2017 All-Star from Castle Island. Desmond's makes it 2-14 to 7. Three temporary subs coming on, 20, 24 and 29. 10's coming off, that's Cleana O'Dwyer. 20, 24 and 29. 20 is Roisin Daly. 24 is Elaine Fitzpatrick. 29 is Kira English. Elaine Kelly is coming off. And Angela McGuigan has also been called ashore. Actually, Kelly is staying on. I was wondering because she's been excellent. She's staying on. And it's 13, Roisin Howard, who's come off. So three changes by tip. Kerry come again with O'Donoghue. And a brilliant save there by the captain, Fitzpatrick, for Tipperary. That was a bit of a rocket, and it looked to be heading for the top corner. Great save by the tip captain. 214 to 7 for Kerry. Those subs, by the way, Roisin Daly 20 is from the Moyne Temple Tui Club. Elaine Fitzpatrick 24 is from Temple Moor. Donoghue from the 45 finds O'Leary in lots of room, so much so that she's able to miss the ball and then go and pick it up and get a free. And 29, Kira English, who is on, is from Art Finnan. And now Kerry rolling on number 16, changing their goalkeeper. Kira Butler from Castle Gregory being replaced with Mary Ellen Bulger from Southern Gales, who's got a very generous round of applause from the crowd here in the stand in Mallow. So both teams running their benches. The decision of the game not in doubt. It'll be Kerry who retain their senior championship status and Tip who will have to go forward to another relegation playoff. And shock. <laughs> Louise misses one. That's unusual. Although it was a tough angle. Actually, hold on, it was over the bar. Sorry, my apology. I should have known. Thought it went wide the way they were going, but the flag went up eventually. It must have just dropped inside the post there. Shouldn't have doubted her. Nineteen is Anna Galvin. Involved twice and back to Louise. And she goes for a shot from play. Lots of height. It's dropping in and around the danger area. Fitzpatrick watched it all the way and batted it away. This is the other Fitzpatrick. Elaine Fitzpatrick, 24, who's just come in. This is Dylan, who's been here all along and has been chased down by four Kerry players. This is Elaine Kelly who turns into trouble. Three Kelly, Kerry players putting her under pressure. She gets her free. And Fitzpatrick takes it quickly. This is Spillan for Tipperary. Roisin Daly for Tip. Orlo Dwyer. Low ball into space. The chase is on, but it was won by Julie O'Sullivan against Fennessy. This is O'Connell. Galvin. This is O'Leary. And this is good work, composed play by Kerry. And there's a super ball into the full forward line again. And Deneen gets there, spills, but turns onto her left side and gets support from Scanlon. So much experience in this Kerry team. O'Donoghue he's on the ball there, or nearly on it. She's been there five years. But if you go further back, Lorraine Scanlon was there in 2012. She won an All-Star in 2017. Ashling Desmond, of course. Won an All-Star in 2015, made her debut in 2009. 
Louise Galvin has gone off, but Louise been there a long time as well, played in 2012 in the All Ireland final, and often played a lot of rugby for Ireland and is back. Louise Namaraherta, of course, has won All Stars in 2012 and 2013 in her 14th season. So, as I say, loads of experience, and Megan O'Connell played in that final in 2012 as well, as did Caught Lynch, who won an All Star in 2012. So they're all back and steadying the ship and bringing a few young players through. And maybe that's why they didn't panic in the opening 10 minutes when they didn't even get a shot on goal and were one down, could have been three down. When they clicked, they really clicked. Ashling McCarthy from Kerr. The shot is going to drop short, but it could be dangerous. But it's collected by, is it Desmond? No, that's actually Ashley O'Connell over there who does well. This is Desmond. This is O'Leary. Gives it back to Desmond, who's gone for the return. And they're both actually from the Rathmore Club. mentioned it before but worth mentioning again that Rathmore won their first senior football championship last year that's why Ashley Desmond is the captain this year this is Carmody who's had a super game oh Deneen looking for a ball through the middle but it's well spotted and intercepted Ellen Moore was in there for tip and Kelly as always is there for tip as well and Fantasy waiting for it, but beaten to it again by the cornerback Julio Sullivan for Kerry. <laughs> Kerry now bringing on Mary O'Connell. They've had Megan O'Connell and Ashling O'Connell. Now we have Mary from the Nagale Club. Shooting at Mary I. She's wearing number 10, but didn't start the game. Number 20 is going off. That's Hannah O'Donoghue. So Mary O'Connell, number 10, from McGill, which is in the Gale Tucked. Ashling O'Connell is Aerobe. She plays her club football in Cork. And the other O'Connell is Megan, and she's with Southern Gales. Referee Kevin feeling taking another note as we head towards added time. caught Lynch up there and this is Mary O'Connell who's just come into the play and that will be charging so that'll be a free out because Lorraine Scanlon basically flattened Maria Curley Elaine Kelly the number five for Tip who's had a super game looks to be struggling at the minute she looks to have taken a knock She's given everything for the cause today. And it looks like she will have to retire. In injury time at the end of this game. So, Tip need another sub. Maybe they've already put her on. I don't think so, though. Let's see if I can see somebody fresh, but I'm not sure that they've done it that quickly and maybe they're going to do it in a minute this is Arlo O'Dwyer spinning through a few tackles nice little pirouette there and she goes off looking for it again but Ashling Desmond is there to sweep it up and the sub who's just come on O'Connell was back there to help with that this is O'Leary Danielle does well there 2020 Kerry Minor captain this is Cot Lynch who's flying in the last few minutes up supporting the attack this is Deneen looks back to Cotton back to Deneen Carmody is there and gets it now and goes for her point she deserves a score after the way she's played and she gets it Carmody certainly a contender for player of the match number nine for Kerry and it's number 16 in terms of points for Kerry. Two 16 to seven points, convincing winners on the day.
nine in it at half time, but now there's 15 in it. Fantasy to Daly, who gets a free. 33rd minute. This is Arlo Dwyer. Goes back to Lucy Spillane. She's got support there from Emma Cronin, number four, but it's, well, it's intercepted, but there was also a foul there. So Arlo Dwyer will take that. Is there something for Tip right at the death? Spillane from Fethard. Burst through one tackle, tries to go past another. And now it's Dylan trying to get through. She's had a super game. And Arlo Dwyer trying to get on her left foot, spins inside. Gets it off to O'Shea, and there could be a goal chance here if she can get through. This is Daly on her right side, but super defending by Kerry. They haven't conceded a goal, and they don't want to concede one right at the end either. That's super defending by them. Close the gap and block as well, and it went out for a 45, but you have to get credit to Mary O'Connell, who came on a few minutes ago for the block. She's maybe playing for a place in the future and wants to make a good impression. This is Eva O'Shea, kicks it low towards McCarthy, but it evades her grasp. And it's Kerry who come away. Lynch to one of the three O'Connells. That one was Megan Carmody. Super ball. Spreading the play. She saw Anna Galvin out there. Actually, is that Anna Galvin? It's not Anna Galvin. This is Anna Galvin. This is Deneen. She spins away. She really is a tricky forward. She really is good off either foot as well. <laughs> that one's just gone to the left, but she can take scores off either foot. <laughs> Kerry Belong and Senior. They've never gone down, and they're not going down this year either. A comprehensive display, 216 to seven points. They have retained their status in senior for 2022, but Tip have it all to do. They go forward to the last relegation playoff against either Cavan or Tyrone next week. It was an entertaining game at times. Died off a little in the last quarter. But Tip certainly gave it everything throughout the game and started very well. We're a point up after 10 minutes. One point of no score, in fact, and could have been three or four up. They also had a goal chance before halftime, but that's not to deny Kerry. They were definitely the better team. And just to round off contenders for player of the match for Tip, well, the goalkeeper was excellent. Their captain, Lauren Fitzpatrick, and Elaine Kelly was fantastic at number five. She would have been my pick for their best player of the game. Laura Dillon gave it everything, as did Orla. O'Dwyer, Neve Hayes tried well and could have had a goal but was unlucky, unlucky and rushing hard was dangerous all throughout as well. As for Kerry, well, a lot of stars as you would imagine. Kira Murphy was super at cornerback. Julio Sullivan on the other side had a few very good interceptions as well. Caught Lynch showed that she is back to her 2012 best. The O'Connells all did, did well. It's hard to pick out anyone, anyone who didn't play well. Neve Carmody really came into it after the first 10 minutes or so and had an excellent game. And Emma Deneen was always dangerous. And, of course, Louise Namaraharta does what she did. Overall, very hard to pick one. Hannah O'Donoghue was very good as well. But in the end, I think it, for work rate alone, I would give it to Lorraine Scanlon in the middle of the field. That was the experience of Kerry, really, that pulled them through at times today especially in the first 10 minutes they didn't panic and they came through in the end comfortable winners here in Mallow 216 to 7 points they have won the battle of survival tip have one more day to try and retain their status from us all here in Mallow for now though it's goodbye